Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to cover the next chapter of ACC FM syllabus, and that is accounts receivable, and the and the second part of working capital management. Now, this topic is highly important when it comes to exam from the examiner's perspective, or if you consider the probability of this topic being examined is quite high. So pay very close attention to the concept I'm giving you in this lecture. For the ease of understanding, I've divided this chapter into two videos so that you may have a deeper understanding of the concepts. Now, account, uh, if you come to the page number 40 of your lecture notes, we have got the start of the chapter from here. Accounts receivable, that's the name of the chapter. When we talk about accounts receivable, it's obvious that we know it is shown in the current asset portion of the financial position of any entity and hence the part of working capital. Now, let's uh, read out a bit description about accounts receivable, offering credit, that is offering, creating receivable by offering credit, has a cost, the value of interest charge on an overdraft to fund the period of credit or the interest lost on the cash not received and deposited in the bank, an increase in profit from extra sales resulting from offering credit could offset this cost. Now, Cost-wise speaking, the receivables should justify the overdraft rate. It means it has to pass bypass the gain that we are getting from the extending the credit should overpass the opportunity cost that we have lost by depositing those funds during that time period in a bank, or perhaps uh, if we uh, fund our uh, cash deficit uh, through overdraft it should justify or sir or should pass the gain should surpass the overdraft rate with bank charge on us so that's what briefly what we will be doing in the receivables management we will be com uh, comparing benefits and then cost uh, the benefit should always has to justify itself over the cost uh, in order for the management to take uh, or give uh, extra credit or credit to the customers. Now, <clears throat> like with everything else, uh, you need to have an account receivable policy to move forward. Formulation or uh, first step is formulation of credit control policy. That's the first step to which we will be managing the receivables. That is us financial managers. The first point is the administrative cost of debt collection. The first thing that in making the policy that you need to consider is the admin cost that comes with the debt collection. You have to make calls, you have to keep the follow up, etc. Then we have got the procedure for controlling credits to individual customers and debt collections. The debt needs to be controlled uh, by, uh, again by what will be the procedures through which we will be coordinating with the customers. Then we've got the amount of extra capital required to finance an extension of total credit. It's obvious that whenever we are giving in credit, that deficit, the amount that we are willing to get locked in the market in our customers it needs to be funded from somewhere else so that this is also a consideration when making a credit control policy the, the cost or uh, fourth point is the cost of additional finance required for an increase in volume of account receivable uh, the same thing the cost might be bank overdraft uh, and this cost can be a certain where the rate which we can take over here is bank overdraft rate. That is what we use in a business to fund the short term deficit. Then we got the fifth point, any savings or additional expenses in operating the credit policy. Uh, all credit policies according to the business have got different needs that need to be kept in mind. So in this point, we will be considering those. The effect of easing credit i.e. high proportion of bad debt might be encouraged whenever you give customers the ease of payment that is 
extend the period for the or give them that they will pay they can pay any time between a month this area will always have a effect this uh, giving the credit strategy will always increase the risk of bad debts then we have got uh, the seven points, the ways in which credit policy can be implemented. But there are two ways through which we can implement this, whether to give or extend the credit period. We can give our customers an extended credit period or we can reduce the credit period by giving them discounts, early settlement discount. If they pay us early, we can give them discounts. Now, there are certain elements of credit control policy. Here, we are formally stepping into the concept of, of making a policy. That is, first step is assessing credit worthiness. Setting, then we got setting credit limits. Then we got collection of overdue debt and the monitoring the credit system. I've also drawn a flowchart somewhat for the ease of learning. We have got a credit policy. Now, credit policy, as I've just told you, should include all those factor, all those seven points which I've just mentioned. The, uh, after that, the next, uh, after the policy making, we have got to go the first step. The first step is assessing credit worthiness. On the criteria mentioned in the credit policy, we have to assess the customers whether they will pay us, whether they will be able to pay us if we give them. And extended credit then we have got uh, credit limits different customers are assigned different credit limits according to the category of the customers financially strong customers uh, we can give uh, extended credit to financially strong customers then we have collection of overdue debt that's a third step after deciding the credit limit we will be moving towards the collection of overdue debt this can be achieved a number of ways via calls emails reminders or credit agency we can involve the, them too and the last step is to keep monitoring the credit system so that it doesn't go out of date or if there are any weaknesses or internal control deficiencies then those needs to be addressed for this cycle to move smoothly Coming back to the notes, we have got our first area, the first box which we just discussed is assessing the credit worthiness. Now, the risk and cost of customers defaulting will need to be balanced against the profitability of the business provided by the customer. I have just told you in the beginning, the extra benefit of giving the credit should surpass the cost of giving those benefits in only this way and in only then then this decision of giving the credit will be justified the first point is new customers should give two good references before being granted credit uh, one way of doing that is you can get in a very good references now in the market in the business is quite common for the other businesses that they give good references if they have good interaction with other businesses they can give references about the business to us and on those references we can determine whether to give them the extended credit period or not then we got credit rating uh, which might be through credit rating agencies now credit rating, uh, rating agencies <clears throat> especially the listed client in the listed client scenario you will always have the credit rating agencies rating their uh, instruments and equity uh, in the market in this way, we assess how much confident the market the market has on those companies. Then we've got a new customer credit limit should be fixed at a low level. Whatever the scenario, a new customer credit limit should be less uh, at the beginning. And once it be uh, um, a time tested customer, then we can extend the credit limit as well. For large value customers, a file should be maintained of any available financial information about the customer. Information is available from an analysis of company's reports and accounts and external cards. 
large customers it's quite obvious that they will be big companies or and they it's obvious for the big companies to publish their accounts on the website uh, we can keep a track whenever we talk about large customers best for the business to keep a separate file for that uh, for that customer so whatever we interacting selling or buying or giving them credit or extending their credit we should be uh, kept in check in line with that and this could include this could also include analysis of their financial uh, statement so that we may to actually monitor them that they will be able to pay us the money press comments irrespective whether the company is highly secured press comments matter a lot when it comes to giving credit to customers they will give the information about what the company is currently doing the company should send a number of a staff to visit the company concerned in their cases uh, uh, if uh, it is a substantial transaction we can what we can do is send our individual our employees to the customers premises to assess how likely it is that we are to engage in business with that business uh, with that customer and how likely is that they will prove beneficial for our business we can do that this also after assessing credit worthiness we are moving to our next box in the flowchart as i have just told you here it is we just covered this area now we are moving towards the setting credit limit section now setting credit limits after assessing the credit rating of the new customer the next step is to set the credit limits which should be in line with the senior management credit policy as i just told you we will be meeting those policy which we considered in, at the beginning of this chapter to guide us throughout the way in case of current customer credit extension request should be carefully considered and it will be necessary to assess the amount of invoices already billed and not yet paid and outstanding date how what is the rate in which the customers pay us the money back whether it's within the credit uh, period allowed or sometimes it goes out of the credit period allowed and how soon they have paid us in circumstances and how much delay they have made uh, when we are doing business with them then we got the extra sales contribution and profit by allowing more credit if we were to give them extra credit period for example from 1 month to 2 months what is the amount of business that we get from those customers then we got the extra cost of allowing more credit such as an impact on bad debt and finance cost after taking benefit into account the next step is to take the cost into account what are the cost associated with giving the extra credit is obvious one of the cost is the finance cost of bank od overdraft and the other cost will include admin cost so and uh, bad debt the provision of bad debts will need to be increased simultaneously with the increase in uh, credit period Uh, as they go uh, side by side and increase in credit period means that the risk of bad debt also is increased simultaneously then we got the rate of return required from additional investments <clears throat> the rate of return from additional investment in account receivable is obvious uh, that not only we will be funding the deficit but we will also need to fund the receipt the amount that has outgone we need uh, to fill up that lack from somewhere so we need to consider the rate of return on that additional investment in working capital will be required then we have got the rate of return required from additional inform uh, investment from in accounts receivable we have already covered this point then we have got the format for this extending the credit period now this format is quite flexible uh, it can include any sort of benefits given in the exam scenario so it's not 
limited to this area if in a, if in a, in a question the examiner specifically mentions that these are the benefits that we will be getting you should include those benefits do not restrict yourself according to the format as I told you, it's flexible. It can include multiple benefits. This formula, this format is constructed for the ease of understanding, for aligning our thought process that we need to compute the benefit and then deduct the cost to arrive at the net benefit or loss figure. It includes most of the obvious benefits and costs associated with extending the credit limit. Now, the first thing is the benefit arising from extending the credit. That the, the first thing we need to consider is what's with the benefit that the business is receiving in terms of cash, obviously. Then we've got the cost arising from extending the credit limit increase in finance cost. We will be computing the finance cost using the receivable days formula. Then there are more cash tied in working capital. If it requires additional investment, then that also becomes our cost. Then we have got increase in bad debt, the risk provision that needs to be increased. The risk provision of bad debt that needs to be increased will also be considered over here as a part of a cost. Then we have got increase in admin cost. If obviously with increase in, in uh, credit year, there will be increase in admin, co admin cost. And this also needs to be incorporated in the format. And after deducting all the costs, we will arrive at the net benefit or loss figure. It is best understood if we could do that with an example. Let's do an example. Okay, we have got the first example over here of extending the credit period. Henry Co is planning to extend credit period from 15 days to 30 days. They are doubling the credit period. The current sales is $600,000 and as a result of extending the credit sales, the sales increase by $300,000. The contribution to sales ratio is 50% as a result of change in the policy bad debt will obviously needs to be increased by $50,000 and the admin cost will increase by $40,000. The current overdraft interest rate is 5%. Let's start using the format which we have just learned. Firstly, we need to consider the benefits, and the benefits uh, over here is increase in contribution. Three hundred thousand of extra sales, and fifty percent was the contribution, giving us a figure of one fifty thousand dollars. Then we need to consider cost. Which, uh, as per the example, we have got increase in bad debts. Increase in admin cost. And increase in finance cost okay the cost uh, the bed debt provision is 50,000 then the increase in admin cost is 40,000 and finance cost is something we need to compute so we will be doing a working over here. Working 
work in one. Current receivables is 15 days. We do not know the figure of uh, receivables, so we are putting an X over here. It's a receivables formula that is receivables divided by uh, credit sales multiplied by 365. That was the formula we, we learned in the ratios. So 365 it is. And when we compute all this, the missing figure of receivables become 2465. 8. Now we need to compute the proposed receivables, which is 30 days now. That that's the extension. And again, we need to compute the receivables. Obviously, the cost of uh, the credit sales have been increased by 300,000. So in the denominator, we need to put the ex include the extra sales as well and multiply by 365. We have got the of 73973. The difference of these two is 49315. I can get an extra space. Now the overdraft rate is we now know from the example is five percent. So applying that to four ninety one five, uh, five percent. This will give you two four. Double six that is our finance cost. Now putting the figure of two four double six again negative. Now the benefit after deducting all the associated costs, relevant cost, we are arriving at a figure of 57534 the benefit is justified because it is a net increase in benefit because it is a net increase in benefit that is net benefit otherwise we would have written a net loss over here so because of the increase in benefit of 57534, the project, uh, the extension of credit li uh, limit from 15 days to 30 days is justified in this example. Moving on to our notes, then we have got our next topic of collection of overdue debt. Now due to the credit limit decisions are taken and credit limit says the next step is to send invoice probably. Now, we are moving on to the next step of after setting the credit policy in the flowchart it's best understood if we can keep a track of it in the flowchart we have learned the credit limit with an example that was the second step now we are moving towards the third step that is collection of overdue debt when the credit limits uh, Decisions are taken and credit limits are set. The next step is to send invoices promptly. The debt collection system should start the follow-up procedures immediately once the sale has been done, that is, the goods have been dispatched. It's best to start the follow-up procedures immediately. Such follow-up procedures will include reminders. We first send them a thank you email and after that we can start sending them reminders. Once that reminders limit is reached, that is set in the credit policy, we will start to do calls, start making calls to our customers as to when they will be available or when they, when it is likely that they will pay to us. 
in an, a rare circumstances, the third step, if that doesn't work, then the third step is personal visit. Our sales representative will go there, our receivable representative will go there and discuss the scenario with the, with the customer. Then we've got supplies withheld. Now, four, five, and six is an extreme case scenario. We firstly cut off the supplies so that we don't incur further loss because uh, the risk of the customer is in this case is quite high so we firstly withheld supplies then we consult an external credit or debt agency to which we are likely to recover the amounts to the more uh, to an extensive portion possible and uh, if that also doesn't work because of the size or power of the customer is the, the final resort that the business has is to go to the court to knock at the door of the court to do they can uh, bring their customers to justice in a legal case that's the collection of overdue debt area that's how we will be doing now contrary to this we need to have what we can do is give an early payment discount to our customer in this way the bad debt risk starts to reduce this is a great strategy but again like with everything else the benefit of giving the extra discount needs to be justified with the cost associated with it moving on to that area early payment discounts offering early payment discounts may make the collection process less difficult the formula over here is one plus percentage discount over percentage amount net of discount is to power number of peers less one and there is a format as well uh, just like the last format uh, the benefit uh, arising from giving the discount should exceed the cost arising from giving the discount the obvious uh, of all benefits and costs i have mentioned it in the format again it is flexible you can include it uh, the benefits as given in the exams don't uh, just follow the examiner when it comes to exam because these topics of working capital are quite flexible which means examiner can always introduce new things uh, when it comes to cost and benefits so do take those into account as well it can simply put an environmental impact or reduction in environmental costs as well. So we can include that in our benefit or cost, whichever uh, is justified in the log on the logical ground. If it's giving, uh, if it's giving the benefit to us, then there's a benefit for us, and it's giving the benefit to the customer. Or if it's uh, giving, uh, it's not doing anything but doing the cost, then we can put it as, you know, as a part of a cost. But it should be relevant. That's the main fundamental ground on working capital it should have be a relevant cost the benefit arising from early payment discount that is increase in contribution profit we have just seen that in setting credit limit and in example as well then we've got decrease in finance cost due to less less cash tied in working capital uh, it's obvious that the customer will avail the discount uh, it's a likely scenario so we will be reducing the finance which is required to fund the working capital then we've got cash tied in the working that's the point covered then we've got de decrease in bad debt because of this the bad debt risk starts to fall and that's why the provision for it is reduced decrease in administrative cost uh, customer they do not need to keep on running after the customer for the collection of the discount is giving they will be running after the business so that they can get the benefit so the admin cost is reduced in this way then we have got the cost arising from a payment discount that is cost of the discount itself what is the amount of uh, revenue the margin we are losing on giving the discount then we got decrease in contribution or profit increasing uh, again it's a part of the profit that is decrease in contribution or profit uh, our profit margin will be reduced this is the scenario which needs to be considered and the third thing is increase in finance cost due to more cash tied in working capital. Again, the finance cost is computed using the receivables formula.
and that's uh, how we will be getting to the net benefit and loss so let's do that also with an example We have got an early settlement discount. That is the example, the name of the example. Let's read out. Henry Co is planning to give one percent discount to all its customers who pay within 15 days instead of 30 days. Normal credit period such a, uh, an action will result in twenty thousand dollars in bad debt and uh, thirty thousand dollars in admin costs. That's a saving that we will be experiencing. Advise Henry Co whether or not to take discount if overdraft rate is 5% and current sales is $300,000. Yeah, we will start from here. First is benefit. A benefit in saving in uh, that is saving in the debts, and we have got saving in. admin cost that's the straight figures coming out from the example so the 20,000 and 30,000 is the admin cost then we have got a finance cost which we will be computing in the working one this benefit will have to justify itself with the cost element and then we will be ge getting the net benefit figure so we will be putting the working one over here the receivables formula is straightforward uh, that is receivable days is equals to receivables divided by credit sales multiplied by 365 we have already learned this formula in the when we were computing the ratios now we need to compute that Current receivables thirty. We don't know the receivables figure. That's what we are after. Current is thirty days. Three sixty-five is the number of days in a year. Or we are assuming there are three sixty-five days in a year. And this will give us two, four, six, five, eight. We need some space over here. Then we need to go towards the proposed that is 15 days the uh, benefit uh, that is giving the discount we uh, if the customer is paying within 15 days multiply by 365 now the receivables becomes one two three two nine that is Now 
now the receiver will become 1, 2, 3, 2, 9. That's 12,329. And that's our decrease in receivables. Now, in order to compute the finance cost, we need to consider the overdraft rate. Which is 5% and we will arrive at the finance cost of 616. So, give, getting back to the example. Our finance cost is that is the finance cost saving is 616 now we need to compute the cost of giving the discount that is the loss of revenue which is cost of discount 300,000 multiply by 1% which becomes $3,000 and the net benefit that we will receive is 47616 the benefit justified itself and it's likely that the, and it's obvious now that the, we will go with the giving the discount coming back to our notes we have got an example over here it's an exam style OT example. Let's do this example. I've already included it in over here. Let's solve that. The uh, format which we will be using is same which we have just learned. First we need to look at the benefit and compare it with cost. Before we do that let's see uh, what the question has to say Handico has an annual credit sales of 20 million dollars and accounts receivable of 4 million dollars Working capital is financed by an overdraft at a 12% interest per year and Assume there are 365 days in a year What is the annual financial impact if management reduces the collection period to 60 days? By offering an early settlement discount of one person that all customers will adopt. So the benefit in this case will be finance cost saving, which we will be computing by looking at the effect on working capitals. And the cost of this discount is simply the cost of discount, which in this case is 20 million multiplied by 1%. That is 200,000. Now let's compute that working one. We know the current receivables. Four million. And Now we need to look at the after discount receivables.
now it becomes 60 days the collection period has been reduced to 60 days we are using the receivables formula so receivables over uh, credit sales assumption is all of the sales are on credit so this will be 20 million and there are 365 days in a year as per the question which gives us the figure of 3, 2, 8, 7, 6, 7, 1 uh, Computing these and we have a we difference of one seven one two three two nine our overdraft rate is 12% applying that to the figure of difference we have 85 Four seven nine of that will that is our finance cost saving eight five four seven nine reducing two hundred thousand and we have a net loss on discount which becomes one one four five two one it's a negative so that's the example or that's uh, the another example the exam style OT example you have to be able to solve these examples in the exam in the, a time condition so that's it for this video